Hi there, my front end friends. We need to stop with the flex boxes for 1D layouts and grid is for 2D layouts nonsense. And today I'm going to look at why. And I'm also going to use this video as a way to help you out. So if ever you have a friend or a colleague that tells you that's what they're for, or how you should be thinking about it, or if you see somebody post it on social media, you don't have to tell them they're wrong. You can just send them this video and let me tell them that they're wrong instead. And let's dive into why with a few different examples that I have right here. So at this top section here, I have the grid and then I have the exact same kind content with the flex there and I put different colors on them just to make it easier uh, to know which one is which though coloring things isn't the necessarily the best way to distinguish stuff um, but you know we have top and bottom too so uh, let's come first on the flex one which is the one on the bottom so dot flex and then you do a display flex right and that gives you columns uh, right there and these days we can also do a gap on there to make it look a little bit better and then I get three columns Awesome. So, you know, that's a 1D layout and that's what people always say you should do, but we can come and do the same thing on our grid and the grid takes an extra line to actually get this to, to look decent. So we can say uh, we need this to be a display grid as well, except when we do that, nothing much happens. Then we do the gap of one rem, but they're stacking. And first of all, there's a 1D layout. I'm just going to say uh, this is something people use Flexbox for and then they change the flex direction. I can keep it one dimensional this way with grid uh, easier. So there's a one dimensional layout that grid is very good at. But then if I want that to be columns, I can say that we have grid template columns here. And then I'm just gonna do a repeat of three columns, one FR. So we get three columns. Uh, and there we go. We have a one dimensional layout with grid. You'll actually notice something though, that the grid one is equal columns, whereas the flex box one isn't. Notice that the middle one here is narrower. So like right away, that's a win for grid, in my opinion. And we can fix that with flex, because then I can come on the children. So flex, select all the children. The most common solution you see here is a flex one, though there's other options, and then it makes them all the same. I don't know about you, I prefer doing it all in the parent, <laughs> having three lines instead of having to come in with another selector and putting that on there. And I bet you you've used this, but do you even know why that works? We, I have a video that breaks it down if ever you want to understand what this is really doing. But I think it's one of those things that a lot of people just do without thinking about it uh, to get the result they want. But there we go. We basically got the same layout for our flex and our grid. Uh, and personally, I prefer this one. I, I mean, you could, whatever. It's not a huge win, but I just wanted to show that grid can create a 1D layout really well. Now, you might be saying there's an advantage with the Flexbox version and that we could, you know, I could duplicate one of the divs in there and that's going to go up to four columns. Whereas in the grid version of it, if I duplicate one of them, we're not going to go up to four columns. We're going to get a new row because I've declared that we should have three columns and that just means new content will come underneath. We could actually get that same behavior coming from grid uh, where instead of doing a grid template columns, what I could do is a grid auto flow of column. And now it's automatically going to flow the same way that grid does. If I add more content, every new piece of content I add is going to add a new column. Uh, and that's, you know, it works really well. This potentially could run into the same issue with unequal columns that we had when we were doing it with our flex box before. So the solution there is to say that the grid auto columns are one FR. Uh, and now that should more or less solve the problem. Now there is the possibility that it's smaller screen sizes. You do get a little bit of inconsistency just because it's going to make sure that things don't shrink too much. Uh, so if you have one really small one, it might get smaller than others, but you could run into that same thing with Flexbox as well. And again, Grid is really good at creating these 1D layouts in other directions, like I mentioned before. So you could actually take that off and have the display grid so they're stacked, 1D layout, even spacing between all of them. And then you could come in with your media query or even a container query. So we could say our min width here is, I don't know, 650 pixels for demo purposes. Uh, and then our dot grid gets the change in direction at a specific size. And so that way at small sizes, it's the stack layout. And then we go to columns at larger sizes. Again, you could do this with Flexbox. I actually find it easier to do with grid. And I know there's a little bit more control and I don't have to worry about selecting the children and getting specific things to happen. Um, I just, for me, it makes more sense when I need consistent layouts with all the same size, that's really what grid is good at, whether it's a 1D or 2D layout. But right now I've just been talking about grid and why grid can be very good at 1D layouts and I'm gonna stand by that and I, I do find it easier to work with most of the time. Uh, but there are times where it can do 2D layouts, but Flexbox can do 2D layouts as well. And this is really what hammers home to me the difference between Flexbox 
uh, and grid. So in this example, we've inverted things. Flexbox is on the top, grid is on the bottom. Um, but the grid layout is always going to be more of a grid. It's this locked in thing like this where I can have multiple columns and I can make it responsive. I'm using uh, auto the repeat auto fit syntax for this. And if you want to see the code for it, it will be linked in the description. Uh, but it's, you know, I'm, I have a responsive grid going on. So we don't have any overflow issues or anything like that. But every column and every row is locked in with the other one because we're creating a grid and then placing content within that grid. The parent is in control. Flexbox, you can make 2D layouts. We just have a flex wrap on there, right? <laughs> flex wrap. Uh, I don't have anything else going on. I just display flex, gap, flex wrap. And this is what Flexbox is amazing at. And you can't really do this with grid where you get these intrinsic layouts where the children are controlling what the layout looks like and the rows are independent from one another. And that's where the 1D versus 2D sort of comes in more where grid, you have the control on both dimensions at the same time. Whereas with Flexbox, you're letting go of the control in one of the two directions a little bit because all the rows are independent from one another and all the columns are independent from one another. Everything's just being defined by the size of the child. This is great for things like navigations or tags or anything as little pills or small things that just need to go next to each other and just be as big as they need to be. It's all about the intrinsic sizing. Find the size that it needs to be. Live with that and if you need to wrap, you wrap and that's awesome. But we have a 2D layout with Flexbox and I think that if you all of a sudden are going, no, it's 2D, it's gonna be grid, well then you're gonna get stuck with something that looks like this when Flexbox would have been the better solution. The same way that you might say that it's a 1D layout, I'm gonna use Flexbox instead, but grid might actually be the more intuitive one where you don't have to do weird stuff like this to get even columns, because grid will just make even columns and the content will just live inside of them. And actually, I, I wanna show one more thing. I didn't even plan on this. Let's go back down to having three columns for this. So I can delete that and then I'll come up here and just delete these ones here. Uh, and we go back to having three columns. And what I wanna look at here is let's select the middle one in both of these. So we can just say uh, section inside of there and child two. Let's give it an outline for now. Outline three pixels. Uh, we'll do dotted red or something just so we can actually see it. Maybe yellow would, act. Uh, let's do five pixels dotted yellow. I think it'll stand out a little bit better. So we've selected the middle one right there. And then on that, let's give it more padding. Padding is going to be two rem. Uh, and watch what's gonna happen here. Notice the middle one got bigger with Flexbox. And that's another advantage with grid. With grid, you have that control coming from the parent. Uh, and you might be saying that's from the box sizing border box or something. No, it's not coming from that. I never declared it, so we can do it. Box sizing border box. It's not going to change there either because when the, the way the Flexbox algorithm works, it's looking at the content size, regardless of anything else you've done. It looks at the content size to figure out how big things are be going to be. And then the padding is added on top of that. So if you have inconsistent padding, it mucks everything up. Whereas with grid, you're setting up the cells and you're placing content in the cells. The parent is in control. The solution to this is here I have these divs with the paragraphs and that's you know the common thing where you end up with like call times three that's your column for each one. Now that's mucked up my entire layout there, so I'm gonna delete these, but then you're taking that content and putting them in each column, but then you have a column, then you have the content in the column, or you could just use grid and keep everything a lot simpler. So yes, you can do a lot of things with Flexbox that you can do with grid. There's definitely some overlap, but if you need consistency and simple things, whether it's a 1D layout or 2D layout, if you need that extra control and consistency, Grid is amazing. And if you need to let the layout do more of its things based on the content and you need more intrinsic behaviors going on, where the browser's just figuring out how big things are gonna be, or you're trying to get wraps to happen at specific times based on minimum widths or other stuff like that, then Flexbox is definitely your friend. And that's regardless if it's a 1D or 2D layout because flex wraps are amazing and create 2D layouts. And there's definitely ways where you can make grid based on intrinsic sizing and you can do more extrinsic stuff with Flexbox where you're setting more rigid sizing and everything, but then you're just fighting against the way the tool wants to work. And there's always going to be a couple of use cases where you need to do something like that. But this is like that first step of which one should I use in this situation, Flexbox or grid, 
the, you know, start with doing it the simplest way and taking the path of least resistance. And then when you get into those edge cases, well, they're edge cases and there's always going to be something that pops up along the way. And I do know that one thing that also happens with grid is that grid feels complicated and people have some resistance to learning it, even though I haven't done a lot here, but things like, okay, I had grid template columns. Now I have auto flow and auto columns and then there's other stuff and there's new units like FR and there's new functions. And it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but like 90 to 95% of what you do with grid will actually be relatively simple. And so if you'd like to know how you can get started with grid, I have a video right here on the easy way to get started with grid that covers the basics of it and doesn't go into all the extras that you don't actually need to know when you first start with it. Those can be really powerful, but you definitely don't need them from day one. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.